Your name, Sister Obegerizita Iwoha. Okay, so, Sister, where are you based? In the United States. When did you first hear about Zion? I was introduced to um, Zion Ministry by a very good friend of mine who also resides in the United States, Stella Nonye. That was during the hundred days, and it was like the ninety-five day. And um, she called me, and we were randomly talking. And towards the end of our conversation, she said, Oh, yeah, Sister Zita, I have something to share with you. I was expecting something really outside Zion ministry anyway. So when she started, she said, You know about this uh, Brother Ebuka? I'm like, Brother Ebuka, no, I haven't heard anything about him. So she said, oh, sister, you need to really listen to him. One of the um, prayer points was I had in April, we have a nonprofit organization, our ministry uh, that is here in Nigeria and also in the United States. And we have really good donors. One of the families that have been really helping us for years now called me in April and they said, we are done. We are no longer doing any faith-based anything we're done. I'm like, God, really? Okay, fine. I thank them for what they have been doing for us. And I left it. Was so depressed, was so disappointed. But I didn't know what to do. So when Stella introduced me to this, I said, okay, this will be my first uh, prayer point. So we finished that in August, end of August. Second of September, this guy called me. And he said, sister, I am sorry, but I'm going to write you a check. And I don't want to disclose the check, but I was blown away. For me, really, the miracles that happened for me convinced me that I can keep it to myself. You know, the rest of the world need to know what really has transpired in Zion ministry. And really come, come forward and just be open about it. You know, talk to other people about it. Because for me, that is the only way we can propagate this good news. Then other miracles. It was like when you put a key at the door, you open it, and that whole fresh air comes out. One miracle after another after another. The last one I just want to share with you was when I was finishing up my doctorate in nursing. Uh, that was uh, in... I was supposed to choose my project topic in June and of last year. Um, I work with women and children, and I say to them, this is what I've worked as a missionary all my life, I want to do something innovative in this area. And uh, guess what? With the white people, you got to be very careful, especially if you're doing it for immigrant women and women of color. Uh, you're gonna, it's really uh, um, an uphill task. But I decided to choose that. So come during the defense, I say to um, Brother Bukas, God, here we come again. I want to defend this project like every other person. I don't want to be delayed. And um, my uh, two weeks after we chose the project title, my professor called me and she said, this is a wonderful project, but it's a tough one. I said, I know, I realize that. I know I'm dealing with minority. I'm an African, I'm an African woman. I understand what women go through on a daily basis, even though I have no kids of mine. So she said, okay, that will, that's fine, as long as you can defend it. So after the 21 days to cut it short, I participated, and I said to the God of Amucherafancha, Mecherafancha, and Okucherafancha, please see me through, my brothers and sisters. On February 27th of this month, uh, this year, I was to do my final presentation. A week prior to that, 
the university professor called me and said, sister, can we use your project as a model for our university? And you can go and defend us. <laughs> so I had not defended, remember? I have not defended my project yet. I said, with all pleasure, as long as you guys give me that paper that has doctorate in nursing practice. So, um, five minutes before I went in to defend my project, they sent me an email and they said, please read immediately and sign. And what that was, was I was picked not only that they, all the votes went for my project, but they gave me the title of a rising star. And now, <laughs> I am going to present my project in uh, Texas in November. If you had an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with the prophet, uh, what would be the first things that you would actually do? You know what, I would like to embrace him if he lets me do that. <laughs> I'm a hugger. And I just feel that he is just, oh my God. Yeah, I can hug him, but I can also lie flat just to have him bless me. Because he has that anointing. You can feel it. You can really feel it. Yeah. And can you imagine an African woman going to represent a whole university in the United States? That is the God of Omesera Fancha. Zion, I, you, you, you.